Thanks for joining our YouTube channel. If you haven't done so already, please click that subscribe button to join our community. That way you can get updated on each week's messages. With that being said, we pray that this message encourages and inspires you to take one step closer to Jesus. Good to be here in the house of the Lord this morning. I want to greet you, greet you all in the matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm so happy and excited to be here with the Word of God. Amen? Amen. How many of you enjoyed the presence of God? I was touched by the presence. Amen? <laughs> Powerful testimonies. And I'm so happy and excited that God is on the move. And God is not only moving here in Costa Rica and wherever people are going out from here, God is on the move and God is using broken vessels like us for his glory. Amen. And, and today I believe that God is going to do greater things. Um, we just heard about SM right now. And uh, let me tell you, if you have more details, if you want to know more uh, things about it, we have a table outside uh, in the main street. So after the service, please talk to them. Please have a uh, visit and you will get more details. So before I enter into the word, I just want to, uh, you know, inv uh, thank you. For, uh, just want to thank you for joining with us this morning, and also our online viewers. I I, I hope that uh, God will touch you today. Amen. Just give a you know round of applause to our online viewers. Amen. So if you, are, if you are here for the first time, I would like to introduce myself. I am Pratyash Thomas, and I'm here serving here as the Director of Community Engagement. And uh, I believe God has placed us here for this community, and God is using Arise for this community. So here at Arise, we have, uh, we always start with a celebration. So this week, uh, along with our team, community engagement team, we had the opportunity to visit one of the local parks here, the uh, Children's Park, and it was awesome. It was awesome. Let me tell you, if you have not yet signed up uh, with our team today, it's an opportunity. We have more more programs and more events coming in the coming weeks. We had a blessed time, and, and I, I cannot forget, you know, one man just came out to us and said, you know, would you just pray for my family? And I'm like, of course, I can pray for you. Maybe I'll pray in my heart. He said, no, I want you to lay hands and pray for my family. I'm like, okay, I can lay hands. And he's like, I need wisdom to raise my children. I'm like, man, this is awesome, Right? So it was awesome, you know, God, you know, just brought people to us and we were able to minister to them. And I believe this is, this is the season that God has placed us to pray for others. You know, whatever that God put up in your heart, you know, burn that, that fire that is in you. Give it to others, you know, lighten up other hearts too. So get excited, please join us. And we had an amazing time yesterday. So I just want to celebrate our team. Thank you for joining. If you haven't joined, please do join next time. Amen. So today I want to continue with our series on the book of James. I believe it really touched you in the last couple of weeks. We had powerful messages and I loved the message last week. It was really powerful. Amen. Pastor Brent was sharing about the presence of God, and I had a wonderful moment. You know, when Pastor Brent was, uh, you know, sharing the message, I was praying, God, if you have a word for me, please speak to me. And, you know, I was here on the prayer team, and suddenly, you know, someone came up to me and started giving me a word, you know, started praying over me. And I'm like, man, there is presence of God. Whatever we pray in this place, you know, God is going to answer. Amen. Are you excited? Amen. So I believe today, this morning, God is going to do greater things. I'm going to continue with the series on uh, the book of James. And today, the title of my message is Handle with Prayer. Handle with Prayer. So um, I want to share something that happened in our life. You know, a couple of years ago, uh, me and my wife, we were traveling on our way, from, way back from Rome to India. And by the time we reached India, we, uh, we had a long flight at the airport. You know, what we found was that we got our luggage and our luggage was completely spoiled. We found something that's very stinking on it, you know, something that smells so weird. <laughs> I'm like, what happened to my luggage, you know? And I was wondering, there was nothing in it, you know, and uh, we went to the, uh, you know, the airport people and had a talk with them, and they said, I'm so sorry, we don't know what happened. So what literally happened was that there was someone else who had placed the luggage, uh, you know, along with uh, others, and uh, they had a champagne bottle in, in, inside the luggage, inside the bag, and they forgot to mention to the airlines that they had something fragile in it. 
So what happened, you know, when they threw the luggage or whatever they did, when they mishandled the luggage, what, happens was, what happened was that the fragile, the bottle that was inside the uh, luggage got broken and it ruined all other luggages too. So you'll be wondering what you are going to say. I'm going to say that our life is fragile. Our life is fragile. Just like this in a bottle that was broken, when it was broken, it, it not only ruined that luggage, but it also affected other people's luggage. So let me tell you, our life is fragile, and because our life is fragile, it's important that we need to take care of our life. We need to be careful with our life. We need to handle our life very carefully. I love the stickers that they put on the luggage, you know, fragile, handled with care. But let me tell you today, we need to handle with prayer. Amen? Amen? Our life is fragile, but let me tell you, when you, have, when you pray, when you pray, you fix all the struggles that you have in your life. And let me tell you, prayer is the best solution, the best solution for all the struggles and all the situations that you are going through in your personal life. And this is what uh, that, you know, James speaks in James chapter 5. We have been going through this uh, you know, from chapter 1 onwards. And today we are going to focus from James chapter 5 verse 13 to 18. So that's the passage that I'm going to uh, share with you today. But before I go into the passage, let me share something about James. This man, you know, we, we know, you know James was a half-brother of Jesus and all this stuff. But this man, according to the church history, he had a nickname. And his nickname was a man with old camel knees. A man with old camel knees. It, it, it says that he had a worn-out knees and because he was known for his prayer life. That's what the history says. He was known for his prayer life and he was an intercessor. He had a huge prayer life, and, and because what he experienced in his personal life, what he experienced in his day-to-day -day life, he is speaking about it. And when you read the whole chapter, you know, uh, James chapter 1 onwards, in 1 verses 5, he speaks about prayer. He says, if any of you need wisdom, ask the Lord. In chapter 4 verses 2, he said, ask with right motive according to the will of God. And when it, when it comes to James chapter 5, verse 13 to 18, it's, it's, it's said that about seven times he speaks about prayer. And the word prayer is being repeated seven times. So I believe in the Bible when something is repeated, it means it has, to, it has its importance. Right? So that means our prayer life is very much important. You know, most of us, Sometimes we go to God's presence only when there is a need. So I just want to ask you this question. Is your prayer your steering wheel or your spare tire? Sometimes we treat our prayer life as a spare tire. Only when it is needed. Only when things are not working. You try yourself. You try to fix by yourself. You try all your wisdom. And then when finally everyone says, I cannot help you, that's the time we run to God's presence. But James says, no, handle your life with prayer. Go to the presence of God. Because when you run into the presence of God, there is a God who is ready to work for you. Today, you might be going through struggles. You might be going through difficult moments. But let me tell you this morning, God is here to fix all the troubles. God is here to fix all the struggles that you are going through. You are at the right place. You are at the Father's house. And here is our Lord ready to touch you. He is here to fix your life. Did you just run out to his, run to his presence? Don't treat your prayer like a spare tire. When things go wrong, wrong, don't just go there. You know, be in his presence. Have a personal relationship. I love the message that Pastor Brent spoke last week. You know, run to his presence. He is always there to help you. Amen. When you run out to him, he is there. He is already there. All you need to do is just take a step of faith. Just open your mouth. Cry out to the Lord. And he is there to help you. When I say that prayer is not a spare tire, I just want to give you an example about the life of Jesus. You know, we see Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, right? I love that prayer 
Because Jesus was not just praying for those persecutions to be removed. Yes, he did say that. But that prayer at Gethsemane has a lot of importance. It's, it's very powerful. Because throughout the life, we saw Jesus had a strong and a very direct relationship with God. He always prayed. Whenever he took a decision, he prayed. When he chose the disciples, he prayed. Before he, you know, went down to heal the sick and before he went down to preach, he prayed. He spent his day and night in prayer. If Jesus had to pray, we need to pray more. Because prayer is not a work. It is the part of a relationship. Don't pr treat prayer as a work. No, it's a part of your relationship with God. And I love this prayer that Jesus prayed at Gethsemane because, love this prayer because this prayer, in, you know, Jesus was just preparing himself. Rather than just asking the Lord to take this pain away from his life, yes, he did say that, but then after that he said, Lord, whatever is your will, I am ready to take it. Can I tell you something? Sometimes when you pray, God doesn't give you a direct answer to your prayer, but he gives your power. He will empower you to go through that situation. I know God is speaking to somebody today. You, might, you, might, you have been pray, praying for a long time. You have been asking the Lord. You have been crying and crying. You have been telling God, God, just take this away from my life. I cannot drink this cup because this is too much for me. And yet God is not taking it away. But here, I'm here to tell you today, God doesn't want to take that away from your life. But God wants to give you strength. God wants to give you power. God will help you to go through it and come out of it with a testimony. Man, that's what happened to Jesus. He prayed, wasn't taken out, but he prayed. The scripture says, at the end of the prayer, an angel of the Lord came down to strengthen him. Today, God is here to strengthen you. God is here to tell you that it's okay. I know that you are going. I know that you are suffering. I know that you are in pain. But I will be with you forever. Hallelujah. If you ask me what is the powerful promise in the scripture, I would say that the, the word that Jesus said, I will be with you till the end of the world. And I know what makes me strong is not because of something else. I know one thing. Jesus is with me because he is with me. He will enable me to go through all the life situations. You know, in James chapter 13, uh, 5 verses 13, uh, let's turn that uh, verse. You know, it says like this. It starts like this. Is anyone among you in trouble? It says, if any, is anyone among you in trouble? Let them Pray. I love the scripture. He's, 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 you know, if you are in trouble, the best way is that go to his presence. Amen. Amen. You know, when he says that if anyone is in trouble, you know, the word that, that is used in different translation, it means suffer. It means being desperate, confused, you know, panic. When you go through all these situations, when you go through all this panic situation, troubles and pains and confusion, he says that's the best time for you to run to the presence of God. You know, what happens is that when we have trouble, when we go through pain, when we go through, you know, troubles, the first thing that we do is that we try to hang out with others. We try to go behind the worldly things. I met a young man a couple of days before, and he's, man, he's just 21 or 22. Awesome, man, but... Somewhere along the line, he had a rejection. He, had, he went through some difficult moment of, moments of his life, and somehow he went to drugs. Let me tell you today, the Bible says, is anyone among you in pain, in trouble? He says, go to his presence. Runs toward the, run towards the presence of God. The Bible says, let them pray. Today, if you are going through a trouble, let me tell you, Go to his presence. That's, there is the solution. 
Let me tell you one of my testimony. I know that most of you prayed for our baby Eliza, and she is doing wonderful. But before that, you know, um, a year after our marriage, we went through one of the difficult moments of our life. We lost our first child. That was really unexpected. We, we didn't expect that to happen. I was believing. I was trusting the Lord. We were seeing, you know, like we were, I was busy with ministry, running around the world, seeing miracles. And when I came back home after a mission trip, my, you know, the next checkup was said that my wife and my baby is in trouble. We almost, we lost the baby. And I had to take Ashley to the hospital, and she was in the hospital, and the doctor was taking her through that process. I remember I was sitting outside the, you know, the, the, the surgery room, you know, like the labor room or whatever. I was sitting outside, and I'm like, I'm crying. I'm like, God, I cannot take this. And you know, that same night I had to preach too. And I'm like, it's too much on me. I was just 27. I, I, I cannot handle that much pressure on me. And I'm like, God, where are you right now? What am I going to preach tonight? I, I, I cannot take this. And I was just, I was just, you know, broken completely. I was just broken. And I was just crying, crying. And I'm holding to my dad's hand so tightly. But when I was crying, I felt, I felt the, the you know, the Holy Spirit moving inside me. And he's just speaking through my tongues. I didn't want to speak in tongues at that moment. I didn't want to pray at that moment, but I felt the Lord is inspiring me to pray. Can I tell you something? With one hand, I'm holding my dad and I'm, and, and I'm crying and I'm crying, but I felt the Lord using my mouth to pray. And I begin to pray in that hospital room. I begin to speak in tongues. And the moment I spoke in tongues and I started praying, I felt the presence of God right at that moment. Amen. Amen. And can I tell you something? I had a lot of encounters with Jesus, but that day's encounter, I will never forget. James says, if anyone is in trouble, let them pray. Because I experienced that. I was in trouble. I was in pain. I was broken. But I know one thing. Prayer is the solution. Prayer is the solution. All you need to do is that just open up your mouth and call out the name Abba. Come down, O oh Lord. Come down, O oh Lord. Because the Bible says through Jesus you have the boldness to enter into his presence and call out his name. Abba. The moment you call Abba, the moment you call Father, he comes down to you. I'm speaking about a God who is living, who is able, who is ready to touch you, who is here today. That's why the scripture says, if anyone is in trouble, let him pray. Can I ask you today, are you in trouble? Are you going through a marriage problem? Are you going through some kind of difficult situation that you cannot handle? Are you going through a medical procedure? Are you going through a health issue? I'm here to say that God is here. All you need to do is that open your, your mouth and speak to the Lord. And Jesus even said this, in this world, you have trouble. I'm not saying that we don't have troubles. No, it's not the truth. Jesus said, in this world, you have trouble. But the greatest promise comes after that. He says, it's okay you have troubles, but I will be with you. Every time when you go through the troubles, remember this promise. You are not alone. You are not alone in this crisis. You are not alone in this broken time. He is with you. Amen. Amen. You know, I love this uh, uh, the story in the Bible. It's from 2 Kings 19 verses 14. And we see the scripture, it says like this, after Hezekiah received the letter from the messengers and read it, he went up to the Lord's temple and spread it out before the Lord. I know some of you might not know the story, but this king, King Hezekiah, he, he was, you know, facing a threat from king of Syria. And the king of Syria sent a letter to Hezekiah. You know, it was a blasphemous letter that says that God will not take care of you. He says that God will not protect you. It's a kind of th a letter that really threatened his faith. That made him in trouble, but the, 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 the word says, when Hezekiah got this letter, you know what he did? 
He didn't call out the army. He didn't call out the other people uh, you know, in his uh, courtyard. But he just, he just went to the presence of God. I love the scripture. It says, he spread it out before the Lord. Amen. Can I tell you something? The doctor's report that you're having with you. Don't read it again and again. Just spread it before the presence of God. Don't, don't, just, don't just believe it. Go to the presence of God. Lay it on the altar. I mean, lay it in front of your, in, in, in God's presence and cry out to him. And I love this story because in the, in, in the next portion we see that God made a solution. God made him victorious. I'm here today not just to preach. I'm here to prophesy over your life that God is here to do something new. God is here to do something new. You might be thinking, I'm in trouble, Pastor. I am in big trouble. I have the doctor's report with me. And the report says there is no help. And the report says I cannot handle this. The report says, you know, there is no way out for me. And let me tell you today, God is here. He has the solution for all your troubles. He is the king of kings. He is a miracle working God. He is a wonder working God. The God whom we serve, he is alive. Amen. He is alive. Come on, start speaking out with, the, with your mouth today. He is alive. He is able when I trust him, when I give my trouble to him, he is able to work for me. He is faithful. Amen. I love it. So James at first he says, those who are in trouble, let them come to me. Let them come before his presence and pray. And now when we read verse 13, the second part, it says, when you are merry, when you are happy, sing songs. He says, is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. This is important too. Right? When you're happy, don't just hang out with people. First, go to his presence and be thanksgiving. Right. Be thankful to him. Yeah, he says, when you're in trouble, yes, pray. And now he says, when you are happy, when you are merry, when you are full of joy, when you, when you received what you have asked for, when life is going well, go to his presence. Yeah. Be thankful. You know, this is one thing that I learned after coming to the United States. In India, when people do something, we don't say thank you. We know that, you know, they are thankful. But one thing that I love about the United States, you know, for each little thing, we say thank you, right? When you open the door, you say thank you. Let me tell you, practice to be thankful before God. We are thankful to one, one another. That's a good, that's a, something good. But let me tell you, we need to be thankful to the Lord. Amen. And every time when I come to God's presence, sometimes I don't feel like worshiping. I don't feel like worshiping, man. I just feel to, you know, be here. But then I meditate where I came from. I just think about, Lord, how far you have led me. Can I tell you something? The moment you go back to your old memories, the, the humble beginnings, and the way the Lord has brought you thus far. Yeah. Let me tell you, you cannot keep silent anymore. You cannot just murmur anymore. You will praise. You will worship. You will thank the Lord. That's why David, when he saw the ark of the Lord, he knew that he is a king. He, he, you know, he was wearing all kinds of blazers and whatever. But when he saw the presence of God, the Bible says, he threw it away. He began to worship. He began to enjoy the presence of God. Today, let me remind you, it's important that when we are in success, when we go through success of our life, when we go through the, 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 you know, the, the, the highest portion of our life, like the, when we go through all kind of joy, it's important that you come to his presence and be thankful to the Lord. Be thankful to the Lord. Let the, let the situation that do not determine your thankfulness. You know, I love this. When Paul and Silas, when they were in prison, and all they can do was they just complain about it, right? 
complain with each other. Man, what, what has God done, did for me? We did a lot to the Lord. We have been serving. We have been doing this and that. But why did God allow us to go through this kind, kind of trouble? But the Bible says at the midnight, they began to praise. They began to praise. Let me tell you something. When you praise, when you praise, you are not, you are not asking the Lord to change your situation. But when you praise, the situation changes. When you praise, the atmosphere changes. How many of you are here today to praise God, to thank God, to, to shout out his name? Because he has done greater things for us. James says, you know, secondly, those who are merry, those who are happy, let them sing songs of praise. I love this. And in Psalm 13, Psalms 34, verse 1, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually in be in my mouth. You know, David is not saying when, when life is going well. He is in trouble, but he says, His praises will be on my lip forever. No matter what crisis I'm going through, what, no matter what pain I'm going through, no matter what success I'm going through, I will praise the Lord. Come on church, it's time for us to praise the Lord for what he has done. Praise the Lord for what he has done in your life. When you remember the days of brokenness and the, the works that God has done in your life, we will praise him. And third, when we go to verse 15, and I love this verse. Verse 15 says like this. Sorry, verse 14 says like this. Third, is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. I love this. It says if anyone of you are sick, you know, some people believe that as a Christian they don't get sick. Bible doesn't tell that. Yes, we live in a mortal body and there, are, there is a possibility for you to get sick. But the truth is that even when you are sick, you have a God who is able to heal you. Right. Amen. Amen. And the scripture says, if anyone of, among you is sick, let them call the elders of the church to pray over them. So again, he says, prayer is the solution. I believe in medicine. I believe in all the works that man, are, man is doing. But let me tell you, prayer is the solution. Right. It says, is anyone among you sick? Let them call. Let them call the elders and pray. Because your prayer of faith is effective and it's powerful. It's powerful. Yes. Don't just think that, you know, prayer is the last option. No, prayer is the first option. Some people, you know, treat the prayer as the 911 number, right? right? When there is emergency, they call. No. Prayer is the first option. Right. Prayer is the first option. When you are in trouble, when you are in sickness, he says, is, is anyone among you sick? Pray. And also, there is something else that he is uh, speaking about in verse 14. He says like this. When, when you are in sick, he says this, let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord Jesus. Remember this word he says, let them call. What does it mean? It means that when we are in trouble, it's important for us to share our pain with one another. That's the church. That's the body of Christ, Right? When you go through trouble, you have to share it with someone else. In, a, you know, in India, we practice this. We practice this you know, in literal form. Like When we go through trouble, we always tell others, call me. Can I tell you something? This is what God is expecting you today. When you are in sickness, when you go through pain, the scripture tells you, call the elders. Who is the elder? In the words that we, when we go through the scripture, the elder is someone who believes in the effectiveness of prayer. Someone who practices prayer. Someone who practices spiritual life. Someone who is full of faith. Call them and pray for one another. 
Today you are here. If you are going through a pain, don't just leave this place with your pain. Come up to the altar. Share your pain. Leave the burden and go out freely. Amen. Amen. It's your initiative to open up your heart with someone. Let me tell you my story. I mean, I have a lot of story. And Pastor Brent always tells me, you know, just leave everything. Share your stories. And I love this story. This happened when I was in my 10th grade. Um, you know, I had a, a snake bite on my feet, on my foot. And I still have the mark of it. You know, it was very painful. But... <clears throat> I didn't know what happened. It was during my uh, school days, just before my exams. And I, I felt, you know, in India, snakes are very common. Not like the garden snake that you have. We have the po poisonous snake, different types of snake. Man, it's, it's, it's scary. So um, I felt something, you know, just bite me on my food, but I didn't look for it. And uh, I went to my college, you know, school, and uh, my, that day's class is over, but as, he, as time moves on, I felt my, my leg is getting bigger, bigger and bigger, man. It's getting so big. And by the time my classes was over, I took off my shoes and I took it in my hands and I started walking back. And I came back home and I told my parents and I said, you know, I felt something, you know, on my feet. Something just bit me. And they said, hey, maybe it, it's, it's, it's a kind of ants. You know, we have different types of ants too. So we didn't take care of it and I had my food and I slept and at night, I felt like my whole body is in pain. Middle of the night, I woke up and I told my parents, my, my eyes seem to be so blurry. I cannot think clearly. I don't know what is happening. We put on the light and what we saw is that, and I, I, you know, they saw that from my foot you know, to up, you know, my body is getting black. So it was a public holiday time and we didn't, you know, we didn't have that facility to go to the hospital doctors are not present there so my dad and mom began to pray they began to pray uh, the whole night and I'm getting worse and worse and the pain is increasing and by morning at six o'clock uh, we had one of our pastors in our church and we, my dad just called him he's also a pastor but he just called this man of God and he said would you just come here and pray for my son and I'm like, Dad, why don't you take me to the hospital? He said, you know, let's try this. You know, let's pray. And a pastor came and he saw me and, man, I was in big trouble. A lot of pain. But I remember the prayer that he prayed. This old man came and just placed his hands on my, you know, towards my ankle. And he started praying with authority. He said, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now all the poison to leave from this body. And I'm like... How did this poison enter into my body? I didn't know what happened. I, I felt something is wrong with me. He began to pray. He began to pray and started, you know, speaking with faith. Can I tell you something? The moment he prayed, the blurry eyes, the blurry vision that I was having, God restored it at that moment. At that moment. And... In the next few hours, the whole blackish kind of, you know, spots and the color and all of my body, it's, it started disappearing. That day, God touched me. Oh, I'm here to tell you that what James says in chapter 5, 14, it's, it's not just the worst. It can be practiced. Yeah. Because the Bible says when you share your pain with someone else and when someone else prays for you with authority and faith, the, you know, the faith and prayer combines together and works for you. Yeah. The, the, the thing is, it's all about are you ready to share your pain? Amen. Sometimes we, we take that pain inside and we just, you know, carry it like a huge luggage. We just take that burden. And people will ask you, are you okay? You'll be saying, yes, I'm okay. No, you are not okay. <laughs> but let me tell you, it's important. The scripture says, when you are sick, go to the elder. Ask them to pray for you because there is power in prayer. Amen. Today, the whole purpose of this message is not just to preach, but I'm here to encourage you. By the end of the service, I encourage you to come forward. We're going to pray for you. Yeah. Not only for the sick, if you are in trouble, here we are to pray for you. You know, I always say that church is a workshop. Don't go anywhere else. This is the workshop. Come here. We are here to fix you. 
because the Bible says this is the house of the Father. In the house of the Father, there is everything. Amen. Are you sick? You have healing you here. Are you in pain? You have joy and peace and everything is here in the presence of God. So James says, if you are sick, come to the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Let me go to the final part of my message. It also says like this in verse 16 along with the verse 15. Therefore confess your sin to each other so that you may be heal healed. And he says the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. It's, he doesn't just say that go to the elder and you know ask for prayer. He also says confess your sin. That means we need repentance. We need restoration. He says when you confess your sin with each other, you get healed. And he says the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. I love righteous literally means right standing. So when does the prayer become effective? Prayer becomes effective when you have right standing before God. And the right standing before God happens when you repent. You know, when you come to God's presence with a lot of things inside and if you pray about it, I believe it doesn't work. Many times we pray, but the thing is we don't repent for things that we are doing. I love this, you know, Jesus said when you, when you go, to, the, uh, to, when you go to, to offer sacrifice, he says when you go and if you know that there is something in your heart towards your brother, leave the sacrifice, leave the offering, go back to your brother, reconcile because forgiveness, risk, reconciliation, is restoration is more important than sacrifice. Can I tell you this morning? It's not that God is not able to heal you. It's something that you are holding in your heart that hinders your healing. Today God says, bring it in the presence of God. Confess about it. Repent about it. And he is here to heal you because the word says the prayer of a righteous person's person is effective and powerful. How many of you believe with me the power, the, the prayer of a righteous person is effective and powerful? Amen. The last portion, verse 17 and 18, it speaks about Elijah. It, sp it says like this, pray without ceasing. Do not stop pray. For the first says like pray when you are in sorrow. Pray when you are in trouble. Second, pray when you are in joyful atmosphere. Third, it says pray when you are sick. And he says in 17 and 18, James is taking the example of an amazing man of God, a powerful prophet, an amazing prayer warrior. He speaks about Elijah. He says like this, and Elijah was a human being, was a, 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 was a human being even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain. And the next verse says, and, the, and uh, on the land for three and a half years, again he prayed and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crop. The verse before, he says the prayer of a righteous person is effective and powerful. And then he says the prayer of Elijah. What is important about prayer of Elijah? We know that when he prayed, it did not rain, right? But there is something that happened after that when we read 2 Kings, 1 Kings 18, verse 41 to 45. I'm not reading that. But the scripture says he prayed for the rain. He prayed for the first time. It didn't happen. He climbed up the mountain hearing the voice of God because the Lord said, I'm going to send the rain. He was expecting that in the reality. He didn't just go there because he felt something is going to happen. God spoke to him that I'm going to, I'm going to send the rain. He knew the promise. And now he's on the top of the mountain interceding and pray. This is very effective. The Bible says he prayed the first time. And he asked his servant to go and look towards the seaside and see something is happening. And the servant came and said, sir, nothing. I love this about Elijah. He didn't stop there. He sent him again, again, again. Can I tell you something? Don't stop praying when things don't work at first. 
It's important for us to keep praying, keep praying, keep praying, pray without ceasing. Even if things are not changing, even if the atmospheres are not changing, even if you cannot see anything in the seen realm, I believe something in the unseen realm, God is working for you. God is preparing a miracle for you. You might not be seeing it today, but expect it. Amen. 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 Today, God is speaking to someone of you. You have been praying. You have been praying for the restoration of your marriage. You have been praying for a new opportunity. You have been praying for a healing. You have been praying for a lot of things, but things don't work in your way. God is here to speak to you today. Keep praying. When you keep praying, God works for you. Amen. I have a testimony for you here on the screen, a video. This happened when I was... Like in the early part of my ministry, I was invited to northern part of India uh, to preach in one of the uh, most persecuted cities in India. It's in Ahmednagar. And uh, I was preaching there about Peter walking over the water. And during the service, I, I found like a group of people entered into the church with, uh, you know, all the Hindu people with the, the big you know, well, I don't know what to say, some kind of sign over their head and something like that. So I, I know they had sticks and everything. So they came with a man on a chair. And at the end of the message, they brought this man and placed him before me. And he said, we want you to pray for him. So this man was paralyzed for about 14 years. Man, I was very nervous. I was preaching about faith, but I didn't have faith. That's the truth. <laughs> I was telling people, you can walk, you can walk over the water. And these guys are telling, you know, just make him walk. I don't, we, we don't want them to walk over water. Just, just let him to walk over the floor. <laughs> I'm like, you know, yes, I tried. I, I went up to him and I prayed. I used every verse that I knew about healing. So I told my translator, I don't translate. I'm going to pray in Malayalam because I know more verses in Malayalam. That's my local language. So no more English. I'm going to pray in my language. I'm going to use all the verses and pray. Can I tell you, I prayed for 10 minutes. Nothing happened. I touched him. I started, you know, declaring. I said, Jesus' name, blood of Jesus' name. Everything that I knew, I practiced. Nothing happened. I want you to see this video. walking after 14 years 14 long years you know what happened was that I prayed first it didn't happen I used all the ways that I could do and it didn't happen and in this video you saw me hugging him right at that moment when nothing was working I heard a voice from God and the Holy Spirit spoke to me Pratyash instead of just using your authority would you just love him the bible says jesus felt compassionate towards the sick and he began to pray and they got healed 
you know, when the Lord spoke to me, you don't see that in that video, man. Somebody recorded it in a mobile phone. I was crying and I felt, God, I didn't know that I, I have to be compassionate. And the moment I began to hug him and we began to cry together, can I tell you something? It didn't work out first time. It didn't work out for 10 minutes, but God did a miracle for that man on that day. I'm here to tell you this morning, prayer is effective. Even if it doesn't work first time, second time, third time, you, you have been praying for years. But let me tell you, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. When you are here right now, keep praying. I want you to open up your mouth today. Just handle your, your pain and your problem, your sickness, whatever trouble that you have, give it to the Lord. Can we all stand up in the presence of God? And I would like to invite the you know, prayer team to come forward. Let me, let me just encourage you today. Don't just stay, sit there. Today, come forward. Come forward. If you have a pain, come forward today. Don't just leave this house without praying. Don't just leave this place without asking for prayer. Because the scripture says when you are sick, when you are in trouble... Call the elders and let them pray for you. Here we are. Here, here we are at the house of prayer. Here we are at the presence of God. Let me tell you, come forward. Open up your heart. You know, share your pain. God is here to touch you. God is here to touch you. You know, Bible says, keep praying. Pray without ceasing. Pray until something happens. Can you just close your eyes? Can you just close your eyes and start praying today? Start praying today today. What is your problem? Are you praying for your children? Are you praying for your husband? Are you praying for a restoration? Are you praying for a deliverance? Are you expecting a miracle? Come towards the presence of God. Come to the presence of God. Those who are heavy burdened, come to the presence of God because in the presence of God, there is deliverance. In the presence of God, there is miracle. There is miracle. There is the power of God working to those who are crying out to the Lord. Come, to, come people. Today, you know, open up your heart before God. Pray, pray, pray. Let the atmosphere be filled with prayer and praise. Hallelujah. We believe healings are taking place this morning. We believe healings are taking place this morning. Restorations are taking place this morning. I command in Jesus' name, every intestinal issues be healed in Jesus' name. Every Every visions be restored in Jesus' name. Every blood issues be healed in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, every numbness be healed in Jesus' name. We believe in the powerful name of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Father, we pray. We pray the burdens to be removed, pains to be removed. We ask for the touch of God this morning. We ask for deliverance this morning. We pray that peace and joy be restored in the lives of people today. We pray for miracles, signs, and wonders because there is power. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Rabba, Shakaradia. Shantaradia, Sokaraba. Before I close, let me tell you something. If you haven't received Jesus into your life, if you have not received Jesus into your life, today is the day. Today is the day. Today is the day. Today is the day. Jesus. Make Jesus your Lord and your Savior. If you have not received Jesus, Close your eyes and raise up your hands. I'm, I'm going to pray for you this morning. Raise up your hands. I'm going to pray for you this morning. God is here. Let Jesus be in the center of your life. Let Jesus be the center of your life. Amen. Thanks for watching. Wasn't that an amazing message? We ask that you like and subscribe and share it on all your social platforms. We pray that that message left you feeling encouraged and inspired to take that extra step closer to Jesus. We'll see you next week.